Hello and good morning again from Macau. Dave Moore with you for the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix, the 55th running of this marvellous event. 12 laps the race distance. We'll be getting the race underway in just under 10 minutes' time from now. It's been so far so good this week. Bikes out on a sighting lap. Then they'll pull up onto the grid. Then they'll go off on a warm-up lap. And no sooner do they come in from the warm-up lap, they will line up ready to race. As I say, 12 laps the race distance. Hopefully we will go the race distance this time. Eight laps was the distance last year, but it was reduced. And of course, back in uh, 2019, we didn't run the full distance, so hopefully we'll get a full race in this time. Front row, Hickman, Todd, Costamo, then it's Datsa, Rutter, Crow on row two, Jordan, McCormack, Hodson, row three, row four, Mora, Johnson and Trummer. Row five, Brooks, West, Evans. Six is Thompson, Robertson and Holland. Seven, Mono, Williams and Schutz. And then at the back, Luckberger and Goodings. And I mentioned earlier in warm-up that Nadia, Schutz, Olivia Luckberger and Mark Goodings had not done enough during qualifying to pick a position on the grid. However, they were given the warm-up session to uh, show that they were capable of being here at Macau, and they did that. So they will all be on the grid, all 23 riders for this 12-lap race. Here we are, confirmation of the positions. So then, well, I managed to go and have a word with uh, a few people. They actually didn't get to see Michael Rutter. Everybody wants a piece of the nine-time Macau Bike Grand Prix winner. So uh, lots of dignitaries and fans, etc., spending time with Michael Rutter. He is so, so popular out here in Macau. And of course, there's a waxworks of him in the local motorsport museum. Now then, what I did find out is what people were doing in terms of tyres. So, Hickman is going with a soft rear. Starts in pole position. And like him as well, Davy Todd. Wasn't too sure when he turned up this morning what he was going to go for. But he, like his rival at the front, has chosen a soft rear. However, of course, Todd is on Metzler's. Hickman is on Dunlop. But this is the wild card in terms of tyre choice. Everybody else at the front has gone for a soft rear. Erno Costomo has gone for a hard. He has chosen a hard rear tyre. Das has gone for a zero. But uh, so Costomo, and in terms of if you're not too sure what we're talking about there, so the soft tyre is a faster tyre. However, over distance, it will start to, I hate to say the word deteriorate, but it won't hold as long as a harder tyre. However, the harder tyre will be more stable. And Costomo, his thinking is either if it does go the race distance and that the tyre is good enough to stay with the likes of Hickman and Todd, then their tyres will start to go off the final third of the race. This is the theory. And Costomo is banking on the fact that he will still be in the running. That is a big, big ask. 
and that that rear hard rear tire will come to pay dividends so five minutes away just under five minutes away from the start Brian McCormack very happy he was saying yesterday um, on the morning qualifying into Fisherman's the wind was blowing them across the course nowhere near as windy this morning still a little gust here and there as Lucas Mora the one issue I mentioned it in warm-up and I checked with the riders with the Sun and good to see Rob Hodson back he was here last year of course but Rob Hodson with SMT and then in fact is Robin Croft Brolly Dolly extraordinaire but um, and Davo Johnson as well backed by Stuart Wilson mode limited also head socks and motor Uri. and his folks are watching back home in Adelaide good morning to them and Josh Brooks another Australian who's here we did suggest maybe the star of the week that he could be running for a podium he's certainly got the ability however he just does not have that Macau track knowledge just yet and he's Julian Trummer as well Julian going so well lives and breathes road racing and Sam West good to see Sam West here again MGM giving him a little bit of backing as well helping him get on the grid but as I was saying, going back to Erno Costomo, his uh, plan is that he will be close enough to the front towards the end of the race that Hickman and Todd will drop back and he will stay strong. It's a gamble. And here's Joey Thompson as well, back in Macau. He was here last year. 74 Racing Limited by Janitech, rider. And alongside him, Dominic Herbertson on the Daffabet racing machine as well. I'm sure we'll see Dominic in a moment. We are just less than three minutes away. <laughs> it's Dominic. Give it a kiss, we are. <laughs> yeah, relaxed. Uh, Frenchman Timothy Monod, a very international flavour at the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix again this year. It has for years been dominated by the Brits. Here's Paul Williams. Hello. And uh, Nadia shoots back at Macau for the second time this year. And uh, she's been pleased. She said it's been growing and growing all week for her, the way the bike's been going. She's happier now. And we've got Olivia Lutberger, another Swiss rider. And then the final rider at the back, and he had a little bit yesterday, 24 hours ago. Fortunately, uh, Mark Goodins with... Uh, a little tip, but he's here and he's on the grid to go racing at Macau. We are a minute and a half away from the warm-up lap. They will go round, they will do one warm-up lap. And then there'll be there should be no tire warmers, etc. No starters. It should be straight into position. Green flag waved at the back, and away they go. And to keep them all in order. So you wouldn't get the likes to say Peter Hickman dropping back through and then if he does that and they come to the grid again, he would have to get off the bike before the last rider and then push into position. They're not allowed to ride through. So it's all designed to keep the bikes going. Good ruling. So they should all stay pretty much in their grid order as they go around on their warm-up lap, come into position and then away they will go. So 45 seconds to go. Grid is being cleared. So, yeah, I was mentioning um, how yesterday the sun at Lisboa was an issue for them in the second late afternoon qualifying session. The only part they have here is at turn nine, the top of the hill. And the, the sun just catches them there during this. It's not as bad as it was at Lisboa.
So that's it. It's just gone 8.40 here in the morning. Green flag being waved. We've still got a few people to clear from the grid. <laughs> John Burroughs being dragged off. Good luck dragging John Burroughs off the track. Davy Todd just uh, cautiously getting away. He did have that clutch issue, of course, yesterday. But he'll have to make his way up through the order. So as I mentioned, the majority of the front runners all on soft rears. Michael Rutter deciding to go for a soft rear. Much happier at the end of that warm-up lap. And that, it worked for the likes of Michael Rutter. Peter Hickman, he said he didn't really need to go out, just reaffirming what they already knew about their BMW. Someone overshooting at uh, Liz Boa. Just looked up then, just uh, not sure who that was. And of course, the crucial thing about Macau is the start. If you're on the front three rows, then you are in with a chance. Fourth, possibly it'd have to be an absolute barnstormer to get there. But it's all about getting around that first turn and make sure you're in the hunt. By the time they get to Mandarin, the first... Uh, the... Uh, There, but yes, so sorry. Um, just make sure that you, by the time you get to Lisboa, you're in the hunt. We saw Peter Hickman win from row three, of course, a few years ago. And we'd have to make him slight favourite to make him four. See, most of the riders just avoiding the inside, really dirty part of the track. Where cars are parked all year round. We will be racing very, very soon, folks, here at Macau. The bikes just gently making their way into position. That's someone from the John Burroughs team. I'm not sure they'll be allowed to uh, go out, but they obviously have some concern over Davy Todd's bike. Just looking for number seven. And it would be a great shame if there was an issue, because we're setting this up as Hickman versus Todd. Out of the front, Peter Hickman really taking his time to get into... And there is David Todd at the outside. So Dodd, Todd just coming through. So I'm, I'm sure if there is some kind of issue, we'll get a signal. But um, we are all due to go racing any moment now. It looks good, does it? Todd's off the bike but he's back on it again. So green flag at the back, we are about to go racing. Oh, Davy Todd, there is an issue. There is an issue. Get out, get out now. Come on, come on. now then, drama at Macau. Something is wrong, David. We had this last year as well, of course. The John Burroughs engineering team have a problem with their machine, their BMW. Now this is kind of going against everything. What are they trying to do here? Are they going to start from pit lane? They need to get that bike off. What a shame here in Macau, Davy Todd. So what's happening here? So we're going to have another warm-up lap by the looks of things. So they've got to do this, so maybe some kind of special dispensation. Wow, confusion here in Macau, folks. An extra formation lap. So there was certainly an issue with Davy Todd before. He was ginger off the line, took it really, really steadily. 
Now, maybe if we can have a camera down in pit lane, trying to see what's going on. He's walking, I can see Davy Tom walking down pit lane, and his bike is being pushed as well. And judging from body language, it looks as if that is it from Davy Tom. He looks dejected. What a shame for Davy Todd. I don't think he's going to make it. There's certainly no hint of urgency between him or the team. So there will be a gap on the front row here at the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix. That's it. Davy Todd is out without even racing a single lap. This is incredible. What a shame for Davy Todd. He's to come halfway around the world and put in the qualifying times that he and the team managed. And we were setting it all up for Peter Hickman versus Davy Todd, and that doesn't look to be the case now. Still just straining my eyes down to see what's going on at pit lane, and there's no way they're going to be back in time. So no Davy Todd then, there will be a hole on the front row of the grid between Hickman and Costomo. A hole for the likes of Datsa, Rutter and Crow to exploit. There it is. That does not look like a man who's about to go racing again. The only thing is he's still got his helmet on. But... Whatever the issue is, they know they're not going to fix it in time. And instead of holding the bikes a little bit longer, I mean, now we will be racing pretty much as soon as they get into position. But David Todd, of course, did give the indication that uh, it was all over. Swiping his hand across his neck just to say, that's it, we're done. What a shame, I'm just as disappointed as you are, folks, because we we're really looking forward to see Davy Todd taking on Peter Hickman, etc., here in Macau. You can see Hickman just taking his time. What a shame. What a shame. So we're just waiting for the last of the grid to form up into position. Here comes Michael Rutter with now, with that gap right there to exploit. That's Costomo to the left of the picture. Hickman to the right, green flag displayed at the back. We are about to go racing finally. We are eight and a half minutes late. But we're about to go racing here in Macau. It's all about the starts. When the lights go out, we will be away, and we are away, and it looks like a good start from Michael Rutter as he goes past Costomo. Hickman will take the whole shot, though, going into the turn. Brooks with a good start, too. Josh Brooks on treble eight as they head down towards Mandarin for the first time. Rutter's into second ahead of Costomo already, and Rutter looking to carry the uh, fight. Oh, Dats is into third, and it is Costomo back to fourth, so Datsa with a superb start on the Penn's bike. And Rutter chasing down Peter Hickman into Lisboa. Michael Rutter chasing hard into Pete, onto Peter Hickman. Oh, Datsa up the inside, oh, getting past. No, Costomo had a look at Datsa. And Rutter all over the back of Peter Hickman as well. Everybody, it seems, Lucas Moore is just at the back there. Everybody, it seems to be through. No one overshooting at Lisboa. So their two boys, or two of their boys, out in front and already a suggestion that Peter Hickman's pulling away. All second gear through this section across the top of the hill. Just coming around, you'll see now, we'll hit a bit of the sun, just gets in their eyes. So Hickman from Rutter, from Datsa, Costomo, Josh Brooks in fifth place. Now, <laughs> we did suggest Earlier this week, oh, do you know what? Josh Brooks could be getting a podium here. But Josh Brooks.
from row five is up into fifth place. So an incredible start from the Australian. Brian McCormack in sixth. So no overtaking at all around this section. Looks like Nadia shoots just bringing up the rear. Oh, a rider down. Someone has clipped, is that more? Oh, shoots has also. Nadia shoots, unfortunately, couldn't stop in time. But uh, so a rider down, that's a red flag. I'm pretty sure that will be a red flag. Unless they can clear those bikes in time. We are still racing. Hickman from Michael Rutter, there we go. Yep, it had to be a red flag. So they'll come back into pit lane. The right decision, bringing out the red flag just as they were approaching pit lane, so they'll come in. So poor old Nadia Schutz just couldn't stop in time. But it did look as if one of the Kawasaki's was involved. So, yet again, another start. Now, I'm not too sure what the rules are out here in Macau. Now, whether Davy Todd could be involved again, maybe the fact that they've started this race. But uh, we'll just leave that one to speculation. But Michael Rutter will be happy. So, too, Josh Brooks with the starts they had. Maybe not so happy that uh, it's come to a premature halt for the moment. I'm just going to try and see if I can hear anyone say anything, see if the cameras can pick up any bits of conversation. Josh Brooks, though, row five up into fifth place. He did get an absolute stormer. So too did Michael Rutter from row two. Not able to really pick up what they were saying there. Timothy Monod, the French rider. Oh, we are going to get a replay. So the bike had gone down and clipped at this point. Well, this is where Olivia shoots, comes round, unsighted. In fact, she reacts to the bike being down, or maybe if there was something on the surface there, perhaps. Again, speculation gets us nowhere, really, does it, folks? But um, poor old Nadia shoots. Unable to stop in time. Busy grandstands here at Macau. There's Paul Jordan. So Paul Jordan, who starts at the head of row three. No idea, obviously, at this moment in time how long we will be delayed, and also, I mean, it's indicating it says on the screen 12 laps whether we'll go for a 12 lap race distance again. I would imagine we will because that all happened on the first lap. But here's another angle. So that was Nadia Schutz, and uh, that's no idea where the rider is on the other machine, but um, hmm. I'm just as much in the dark as you are at home, folks, watching, but... Interesting to see, again, just what we were talking about, the tyre situation, obviously very early in the race, but... Uh, Costomo getting passed by Datsa and Rutter off the front. Yeah. 
Just the riders talking about exactly what happened. So a great shame, really. Obviously, no one wants to tip off in any race. But uh, certainly, Michael Rutter and Josh Brooks, whether they'll get as good an opportunity again from a restart remains to be seen. And Datsra as well. It looked even on that opening lap. Here we go. Temperature is quite cool as well this morning. I've been in Macau in the past, it's been blisteringly hot. But um, yeah, a warm summer's day is what in England is what I'd uh, suggest it's like. Some work going on with Davy Todd. I would be interesting to know what the score is with Davy Todd. They're still working on that bike, so maybe they think that they can get back out there, and which is what everybody wants. So whereas someone's misfortune, two riders who look like they won't be joining the grid again, they're putting fuel in. Davy Todd, they are going to race, folks. Well, this is great. This is good news, really good news. It looks like Davy Todd will be going back out there. A wave for everyone back home from Timothy Mono. So the drama is that Davy Todd will be taking up his position on the grid. Absolutely sensational here at Macau. Yet again, you can never script a Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix, can you? We're still waiting to have confirmation of a start time, or a restart time, I should say. So quite a few of the fans taking opportunity to go and get another drink, etc. And by the time the announcement goes out, when this race goes gets underway, we will have full stands yet again. Danny Horn and Dominic Herbertson looking very relaxed. So too Mark Goodings. Still waiting for any information that's come through, but uh, nothing so far. But we are still showing us 12 laps. All happy in the Joey Thompson camp. Clearing out any dirt that may have been picked up. And Rob Hodson, Robin Croft here from SMT Racing as well, the team boss. But Rob, very happy with the way things have been going this week. And really, you would have to say, with the likes of Rob Hodson, they're looking to win the non BMW Cup. Not that such a thing exists, but with so many BMWs at the front. He'll go home, or one of the riders will go home saying, yeah, I was the first non-BMW across the line. So something else for them to race for as well. The riders will have their own personal goals. I mentioned to Peter Hickman about that first 100 mile an hour lap earlier this morning and that he could, needed to find eight seconds from somewhere. And he just laughed. <laughs> he said, it's going to be a long time before that happens. Still no information as we approach nine o'clock local time here in Macau. <laughs> Paul Jordan has said this week it's been the best ever superbike that he's ridden in his career. 
still looking for a permanent ride next year, but um, he may well have done himself a big favor with the Penns team, who compete in the International Road Race Championship, of course. Maybe we might see Paul Jordan racing in that series next year. Still wait confirmation. It must just be a case of clearing up. Maybe if there is something on the surface that caused those bikes to fall, that might just take a little bit longer in cleaning the road surface. But this man, Davy Todd, well, that those eyes just say, who knows? Who knows? In fact, it'd be great if the camera could follow him. He'll end up talking to someone, and we might just find out exactly what happened. He's just walking over now to talk to Peter Hickman. He's, in fact, Todd just chatting with Peter Hickman. So, Hickman did mention the word oil then, but who knows? Make of that what you will. Didn't quite hear, unfortunately, what the score was with Davy Todd. But obviously he had that issue on the warm-up lap that caused him to pull in. So, 55th ever running of the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix. British riders have dominated the event through the years. Thinking back to the likes of um, Mick Grant, I think was a winner here, wasn't he, back in the day? Charlie Williams as well. I'm sure Mick and Charlie will both be at home watching at the moment. Yeah, Ron Haslam, Charlie Williams, the likes of uh, setting out uh, lap records. But of course, 1988 is the year we all remember when Kevin Schwantz came to Macau and rode round on his back wheel, despite the best efforts of the likes of Robert Dunlop to stay with him. Back then, of course, two leg races. Then we went into the 90s, the likes of Carl Fogarty, Steve Hislop, and Mike Edwards, Spike, who uh, went very well here and is still involved in motorcycling. Everybody wants a piece of you, Macau. Lots of pieces to go around as well. So, But of course, uh, I think the first ever 90 mile an hour lap was Michael Rutter. I know I was talking about 100 mile an hour, but the first 90 mile an hour from memory, don't correct me if I'm wrong, please, but uh, around 1998, 90 miles an hour. And of course, then we had uh, the first ever lap inside two and a half minutes. And that was, of course, someone who we thought would have been here this year. Unfortunately, we're missing. And that is John McGuinness when he did that 2.29. Then, of course, Rutter was the... He then took the lap record again. 
but then came Steve Plater, who really upped the ante when he came to yeah, Macau. Just tipping in, it was just like not even Davo stuck his hand up, and we just saw him went. <laughs> But then we got through, yellow flag, and me and Evans are like, oh, we're still going, right? <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, Evans, Evans. <laughs> Hurry up, Evans. So there we go. There is the cleanup operation we just heard there. So I just wonder if there was some oil, maybe, from somewhere that brought down that bike. And then I thought maybe Nadia shoots when she came down. It may have been she reacted to a bike being on the road and just the front tucking because she really hit the uh, anchors very, very hard. But uh, maybe she found whatever brought the first bike down as well. But you just heard there what Dominic Herbertson was saying. Anyway. Yeah, I was talking about Steve Plater who really shook Macau when he came out here back in 2006. Yes, it was 2006. And then, of course, McGuinness taking the times off then as well. But then in 2010, we had Stuart Easton. Absolutely incredible. The only ever lap over the 95 mile an hour average mark. So Stuart Easton setting that, and it still stands to this day, 13 years on, that is still the lap record. Then we had Glenn Irwin, of course. Glenn, who'll be watching us over in Northern Ireland if he is at home at the moment, or whether he's on holiday, perhaps. But he put in the fastest ever lap by a newcomer in 2016. And then, of course, he did unofficially break Easton's lap record, but that was during qualifying. The lap records only stand during the race. And of course, uh, Glenn Irwin went on to win. Signing of the Northern Irishman to win as well. Philip McCallum. Jerry Mimmett Williams did win. When it was a two-legged affair, I'm pretty certain he won the first leg and then elected not to go out for the second leg. Hello again from Macau, where the Motorcycle Grand Prix is estimated to restart in around six minutes from now. We've had a clean-up operation underway here, just going into Donna Maria. Nadia Schutz, we know, is one of the fallen riders. Still no confirmation of the other rider. It did look as if it might have been Julian Trummer who was getting into the course car. Whether it was or not is purely open to speculation. But uh, we're still waiting for confirmation of who was involved. But uh, thankfully, it looks like both riders were OK. We're still showing as 12 laps as well. Oh, there is Julian Trummer. So there is Julian Trump. It did look like Julian that got in the car, but I'm not certain 100% that it was him. However, so yes, we are going over 12 laps. The exit will open at 9.35 and will be open for 60 seconds only. Bikes will proceed around onto the grid, where they may be assisted by one mechanic only. I'm picking up just as much information as you are back at home, folks. So, 9.35 is when pit lane opens. So we're looking roughly around 9.40 perhaps for the race to get underway or whether they'll just once they get everybody in position whether we're going to have a sighting lap and then a warm-up lap i can't confirm that at the moment i would imagine that would be the case perhaps but then again they did suggest that only one mechanic per bike will be allowed on the grid so it's been a 
it will be an hour. So I think it was Julian Trummer. Just looking for any scuffs on his leathers, but uh, he's quite animated and the hand gestures, the international motorcycle racing spill hand gestures are coming out. So Josh Brooks, what a storming start he had. He'll be looking for more of the same again. Just looking for Brian McCormack's bike as well. I can't see that should have been there. Maybe it's outside the pits. There's Camille Holland from the Czech Republic. As I was saying, Josh Brooks had such a storming start from row five up into fifth place. So we're three minutes away. So time to put helmets on because there are two and a half minutes when pit lane opens. They have a minute to get back out on track and get considering they've had the best part of around 40 minutes to prepare. But that is a sight that every motorcycle race fan is delighted to see. Just they'll be hoping that they'll have no more false starts this time around. Phil Crow also due to go out, but Davy Todd will take up his position. So if someone else's misfortune is someone's good fortune. David Datza was in third place when that red flag came out. He had a storming start too from row two exploiting that gap that was in the front row, Paul Jordan. So there's Bathen's backs, Michael Rutter. But was Brian McCormack another rider involved? We only saw two bikes on the screen. And I've yet to see McCormack out there. But again, speculation can get you nowhere. So Erno Costamo. As I mentioned before, the electing to go with a hard tyre. I would imagine he's staying with that theory as well, that it will deliver him the goods over race distance. But however, we have to complete race distance as well, 12 laps. That's the real Michael Rutter, not the waxwork. You have to go down to the motorcycle, uh, Motorsport Museum for that one, just in case you thought they'd brought it down here, because uh, there was certainly no movement then. But he certainly got plenty of movement off the start, a cracking start from row two for Rutter to go up into second place. But there was that gap ahead of him to exploit, and he made the very most of it. As to did David Datzer, of course. So half a minute to go until pit lane opens. It's just a guess on my behalf, and I'm sorry I can't give you solid information. But I would guess that from the sighting lap, they will get up onto the grid and will go racing from there. Or whether they'll get another warm-up lap, I've just not been able to be... I've not been fed any of that information, unfortunately. Things happen a little bit differently in this part of the world than they do elsewhere. So they have a minute to get out onto the track. Nobody hanging around, of course. But I've not seen, so I think perhaps Brian McCormack, as Rod Hodson makes his way out, I think perhaps Brian McCormack was involved. Julian Trummer was involved, and then, unfortunately, Nadia Schutz was involved as well. They did take a long time cleaning the track, so whether there was either oil had come out of a bike or whether the crash then chuck some oil onto the surface. But certainly there wasn't any Armco repair going on. see Davy Todd making his way up through the order to take his position on the front row of the grid. So that Hickman-Todd battle that we've been 
Building up towards, looks like it's going to happen again. Davy Todd must just be praying at the moment that he's going to make it all the way round, and if he makes it all the way round, then he will be good to go. The mechanics are just taking up their position on the grid right now, one per team. So maybe it's just to make sure everything's OK, and then perhaps they'll go racing. So Nadia Schutz and Brian McCormack, both conscious and receiving treatment at the hospital. We'll get more updates on that, but they're both fine. But it was Brian McCormack involved in that. So Nadia Schutz and Brian McCormack, both conscious after we are going to get a warm-up lap, just had that confirmed. So they are going to do a warm-up lap after this sighting lap. And then we will be racing at Macau. The local time just coming up to 9.38 in the morning here. It certainly did look like Julian Trummer as well was um, getting in that course car. So it'll be Hickman and Todd with those soft rear tyres on the front row of the grid. Costa over the hard. Datsa and Rutter have got soft tyres as well. Will it be the tail of the tyres over 12 laps? It's all eyes on Bike 7, of course, as they make their way up into position. After the drama again, we had drama last year, of course. The rider's not happy with the condition of the track. Some riders wanted to race, some riders didn't, and so in the end they postponed it till the following day. But you can see the pink bib of the John Burroughs engineering RK racing team. And here comes Rutter, and there is Davy Todd just going into position now. Hickman leaving it late as well, just coming up now into... So they're all just looking... That's a lot of work going on, just checking underneath Todd's bike. Looks good. Looks all positive, certainly the body language. So we are going to go for a warm-up lap. Then they'll form up and pretty much as soon as the final rider takes their position on the grid, hopefully we'll then get the green flag and we will be racing at Macau. Still a little bit of activity going further at the back. So the board goes out to indicate we're about to set off again on another lap. This will be the warm-up and then, fingers crossed, we'll have 12 laps of racing around the gear circuit for the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix, the 55th running of this event in the year that the overall event, the Macau Grand Prix, celebrates its 70th anniversary. So here we go, this is the warm-up lap. And now, on this occasion, no hole for that man to exploit because Davy Todd is there. What can we expect from Josh Brooks on this occasion as well? Michael Rutter, the second fastest rider ever around Macau, 2 minute 24.0. That was 13 years ago. What a race that was with Stuart Easton as well. Stuart Easton still 2 minutes 23.6. And on the Kawasaki. So that was Peter Hickman just going slow. Maybe just letting everybody go through as everyone tears up San Francisco Hill. 
It's Rutter who's leading them on this warm-up lap. Davy Todd looking very comfortable. Whatever issues he had appear to be behind him. The last great motorcycle race of 2023, of course, Macau. Peter Hickman's fastest ever time, 2 minutes 24.3, by the way, that was back in 2017. Puts him fourth on the list of fastest riders behind, of all time behind Glenn Irwin, Michael Ritter and Stuart Easton. And Martin Jessup, who always went well at Macau, no longer racing, unfortunately. Great rider, character as well. He also got inside 2 minutes 25. Only five riders have married, uh, managed that in the past, going inside 2 minutes 25 over race, uh, during the race. You see the lack of adhesion flag just being waved. Just to remind the riders as they go into Donna Maria that there is dust down. So there was some kind of oil or some kind of liquid down on the track. Not too far away, folks. 12 laps the race distance, of course. Sam West just coming through ahead of Michael Evans on track. Josh Brooks. What can we see from Josh Brooks in this race? Could he? I suggested on the first practice, the free practice session, that maybe once Josh Brooks is familiar with Macau, that he could be a surprise podium. However, qualifying, the times didn't really come to him as we would have been expecting. But as we saw from that super start he had first time around, up into fifth place by Lisboa from row five. However, a repeat of that would be sensational. So there is... Uh, Hickman just taking up his pole position. Just coming up to quarter to ten in the morning here. So I know it will be very late back home in the UK and also across Europe. Thank you for staying up with us. Hopefully we will deliver another great motorcycle race here from Macau as the red lights go on after the green flag at the back is waved and away we go. And it looks like a best start again from Hickman. Todd is right with him. Rutter up from row two into third place as they go down towards Mandarin for the very first time. And Rutter looking to maybe make a move on Todd. Costomo is also there, but here comes Rutter, as he know, just pulls out, tucks in behind. Costomo is in fourth place. That's unable to get past him this time. So out of Mandarin going down to the fastest part of the circuit into Lisboa, up into around 190 miles an hour already. Hickman putting his foot out. I can't believe the peg is that hot already, but maybe it is. It's right, uh, the exhaust is right under the uh, peg on that side. So up San Francisco, they sweep. Hickman from Todd from Rutter. Costomo Brooks with another great start. So too Lucas Mora. This is on board with Michael Rutter, the Baytham's backed rider. Paul Jordan just in behind Datsa. Datsa with a terrible start this time. He was third first time around on this restart. He finds himself down in ninth place. But Brooks into fifth behind Costomo as well. Hickman. Will he pull away from Todd? Can Davy Todd stay with him? Coming down from the top of the hill. He'll be sweeping in. It's all second gear through this part. So coming into Donna Maria now. Todd Wright with Hickman. And already these two pulling away from Michael Rutter and Erno Costomo. The top three all on soft rears. Costomo on that hard rear, of course. And Todd sticking with Hickman. And that. Was that Rutter that just pulled over? I think that was Michael Rutter who's just pulled over, so Rutter looks to be out of this race. And already, Costomo up to third, that puts Brooks into fourth, so Michael Rutter at Melco just running on, and that uh, certainly looked to be more 
an issue with his machine and he decided to retire as opposed to him making a mistake. But this is the heavyweight fight. This is the bout we've been building up through the sessions. Hickman versus Todd. Now, is David Todd just content to sit behind Hickman and stay with him and make sure the gap is close enough? Or will he look to land a few blows early on in this race? We are on lap two already. Tosmo in third, Josh Brooks in fourth. We all thought, talk earlier this week, oh, Brooks could be a podium, could be a podium. But his lap times just weren't there during qualifying and thought, well, maybe he'd be happy with maybe getting towards the top six. So Costomo in third, Brooks in fourth, Lucas Mora in fifth. Where's that come from? On the Kawasaki in by, on bike 18. We have Peter Hickman providing the pictures, just looking back. Lucas Mora, who was on row four alongside Davo Johnson and Julian Trummer. But Lucas Mora up to fifth place. Brooks, who was on the row behind, into fourth. Incredible start to the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix. Three tenths of a second just behind Todd. So Michael Rutter is down pit lane. So unfortunately for Michael Rutter, he spent a lot of time at Donington Park riding Peter Hickman and Josh Brooks' superbikes in preparation for the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix. But his race this year has come to a premature end. A shame for Michael Rutter, the Bathams rider, but already these two. And here he is. Warren and John. Just trying to figure out, couldn't work out what Michael was saying. It's hard to at the best of times, but um, he's got his helmet on. He won't mind me saying that. Meanwhile, Davey Pot Todd refusing to let go. He has his teeth sunk right into Hickman's backside as they come out of Fisherman's again for the second time in this race. They were the two riders in qualifying, and they appear to be the two riders in race mode as well. And just imagine had Davey Todd not been able to rejoin as Costomo comes through in third place, and already a big gap almost five seconds down on David Todd in second place. And then another three and a half seconds almost back to Josh Brooks. Statzer is up into fifth place. So they tip into lower. There is Boa for the third time. And there we have the two riders go through, no sign of Cosmo. What a pace these two riders are setting at the moment. Hickman with the fastest, uh, sorry, Todd with the fastest lap so far, 224.8. A tenth of a second, well, less than a tenth of a second, about three hundredths of a second faster than Peter Hickman, who's got a 224.9. Cosmo is in the 226s, 0.8. So that 224.8, that is Davy Todd's fastest ever lap. His uh, fastest lap in race mode was a 228.0 back in 2018. So already he's put his fastest lap, and we might see, oh, he took it right out to the edge there, did Davy Todd. So 224.8 makes him the fifth fastest rider around Macau, behind Hickman, Irwin, Rutter, and Easton. And that 224.9 of Peter Hickman, six tenths of a second slower than his fastest ever lap of Macau. Through Don Maria they go. It might be the tail of the tyres. We have Hickman on, uh, Dunlop on the front, uh, not on the front, Dunlop. Hickman out in front on Dunlops. Todd in second place on Metzler. Bruno Costomo, last year's Macau Grand Prix winner, still holding a solid third place, but he's a good couple of seconds a lap down already. Josh Brooks with 228.6. So I think Josh, maybe it wasn't 
quite what he was expecting, Macau, when he first started out here this week, and it's taken him a little bit longer to adjust and get to know the place. But boy, does Josh Brooks know his way around Macau now. Fourth place ahead of Datsa. We've got Mora, Rob Hodson in seventh place, Paul Jordan in a strong eighth place as well. Joey Thompson showing very strong in ninth as well, ahead of Sam West, who's tenth. Unfortunately, it was a Davo Johnson has come in. It looks like Michael Rutter has rejoined, by the way. So Michael Rutter has gone out for the ride. He loves Macau so much. He is. Michael Rutter has gone back out, by the way, folks. He's down in around 20th position at the moment. Phil Crow as well down the order. There is Rutter. I don't know exactly what he's up to, but um, he's going around. And certainly what he doesn't want to do is get involved in uh, what's happening at the front between these two. And they will be coming up across him not too soon, but um, he is the next rider ahead of them. Davey Todd, a suggestion perhaps that he's losing a little bit of ground. Oh, is that Dominic Herbertson that's just shot on at uh, Lisboa? But a little bit of ground to Peter Hickman. Peter Hickman just pulling the pin slightly. 224.6 from Hickman on his last lap. The fastest lap of the race so far. Still three tenths outside his fastest ever lap. But Peter Hickman... Oh, a little slide from Hickman as they come down to the Melko hairpin. He won't have even noticed that, of course. Oh, Todd, in trying to close the gap, ends up going too fast in and then too slow out. Just caught a glimpse of a rider just pulled over at the side. So the yellow flag is out at turn 18. So we have a retirement. So Davo Johnson looks to be in retirement. Unfortunately, the Australian ace is in. Phil Crow was also pitted as well. And Michael Rutter is showing is in the pits. So not too sure what he accomplished by going back out and coming back in. Maybe a little bit of info about the bike. Meanwhile, how committed was Peter Hickman going in and out of Mandarin? Absolutely on it. He was saying last night, when well, the sun was right in his face here into Lisboa, he had his little marker, went one, two. He couldn't see because the sun was right in his eyes, so he counted two and then hit the brake. Incredible. But Peter Hickman, a three-time Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix winner, pulling away from Davy Todd. Here is Josh Brooks. In third place, where is Costomo? Was that Costomo who pulled over? Incredible. My apologies for missing that. Was that Costomo at turn 18? Double yellow flags at turn 18. And we did suggest, as I say, Brooks could be on for a podium. And he finds himself in third place. David Datzer, though, has the experience of racing here in Macau last year, very close behind in fourth place. Rob Hodson also in fifth place. Lucas Mora also in a strong sixth position. My goodness me, what a story it would be for Josh Brooks on his debut at Macau to take third. We're still not at halfway though, folks, a long, long way to go. And no doubt more drama to unfold. 224.4 from Peter Hickman. So that is under a second off the fastest ever time of two minutes, 23.6. And Datsa closing that gap. He's gained a few tenths of a second on uh, Josh Brooks, the two-time British Superbike champion. So Erno Costomo gambled. He went for that hard tyre in the hope that the race would come to him, but uh, that's it from the Finn, last year's winner. Shame for him, but I'm sure he will be back. The king of Imatra, no longer the king of Macau. That crown looks as if it could be going to Peter Hickman again for the fourth time. Davy Todd 
losing half a second on that sector. Hickman was uh, saying he was struggling on sector four yesterday. That's where the yellow flags are. That was the one sector he couldn't get quite right, but he was happy to let that one go because he said this is the important part. This first sector and the last sector as well out of Fishman's down into our bend. Again, that foot cooling maneuver off the pegs. And his last lap, just a shade off his fastest so far, three tenths slower that time, a 224.7. And I would imagine we're going to see a little bit more from this battle as Hickman pulls away from Todd and Josh Brooks sensationally in third place. Who saw this coming? A fifth row start for Josh Brooks. And he finds himself in third place. David Datsa was fourth fastest in qualifying. Began on row two, didn't get the best of starts, but he's recovered well, the German rider. And he fancies getting on the podium again at Macau. I think it's fair to say Josh Brooks does know his way around the gear circuit now. In fact, he's just put in... In fact, it's Datsa actually just put in some very fast sector times as well. Datsa with a soft tyre. Rob Hodson not too far off in fifth place. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter Hickman continues to pull further and further away from Davy Todd. Where is Davy Todd? There he is, just coming into view now. There is Warren John and Michael Rutter. Are you going to give us a smile? Yes, he does. So, shame for Michael Rutter, especially as he's built and built and built throughout the week here at Macau. I would think this will be in the 225s, even maybe in the 226s this time for Hickman as he crosses the line. It's a, yes, 225.0 for Hickman this time, so he's just easing up a little bit, perhaps saving that tyre to go the whole race distance. We are into the second half of this race, and is that Data ahead of Brooks? That would be incredible if he's passed him somewhere around there. Maybe a mistake from Brooks, but he has. So Datsa is into third place ahead of Josh Brooks. Josh Brooks has lost a fair bit of time. It must have been maybe into Melko. He's dropped. He's now actually closer to Rob Hodson back in fifth place than he is to Datsa in third. Datsa with plenty of momentum. And a little bit of wheel lift at the front from Brooks as they come out of Mandarin down to Lisboa. And Brooks wants that third place back, doesn't he? Datsa, as we saw in qualifying, knows his way around here. He's been super happy all week. The Penns team as well that he's involved with certainly know how to build a Macau bike. David Todd's lap times have dropped right off 229.5. I think he knows the game is up. They've still got to complete the race. You don't hand out prizes until that chequered flag is waved, of course. So it's not all done and dusted. And we have seen drama in the past, of course. But Hickman is in Hickman mode right now. And Datsa pulling away from Josh Brooks. All second gear through here. You just clip into third as you come out of payol, then down to first gear for police, then second for Moorish, second all the way around here through Donna Maria, and then into first gear into the Melco hairpin. The one part of the circuit where the cars can't overtake. However, no such limit exists for the motorcycles. So, Davy Todd coming along, just nicking it back into third gear for our bend, then up into four, just approaching around 130 miles an hour. 
into reservoir at turn one. So fourth gear there, then just coming up into fifth gear here. Then nicking into top gear, around 150 miles an hour. Meanwhile, Lisboa for Peter Hickman, just touching around 190 miles an hour, which is incredible on the street circuit like this. You'd be getting great signs as well from Daz Jones and uh, Chris, his two right-hand men here. He does a 226.1 on that last lap. Davey Todd does a 230.8. So that gap now from Hickman to Davey Todd. 13 seconds. So Davey Todd, a good 13 seconds then ahead of David Datzer. So if Peter Hickman wrote down a plan last night for how this race was going to go, this is how it is working out for him right now. He doesn't need to push that soft tyre any harder than he needs to. He can make sure he can cover the whole race distance, the whole 12 laps on that Dunlop. We saw how hard David Todd was trying before. We saw him into the Melko hairpin, really trying to gain some ground on the brakes, ended up overshooting slightly, losing a bit of ground, losing a bit of momentum, and losing valuable time to Peter Hickman. So 224.4 looks like being the fastest lap of the race. Davy Todd with a 224.8. The next fastest lap after that, David Datzer. And he's just put that in, actually, 227.1. The third fastest lap of any rider in this race. And Datzer's just done it on that last lap, on lap seven. Everybody else, uh, Brooks and Hodson, 228s. Then we have Moore and Jordan doing 230. 231s for Herbertson, West and Thompson. Michael Evans with a 232. Camille Holland with a 233. Then we have the likes of Mono and Williams, Goodings, Luckberger, all doing 236s. Costomo, of course, did a 226 before he retired. So actually, in fact, that's, a, that's the fourth fastest lap of anyone, as we see Datsa now still in third position. And three or so seconds ahead of Josh Brooks. David Todd already on his way down into Lisboa, as I say, 190 mile an hour, plus the fastest part of the track. And you can see that's the sign, the body language of a man who says, do you know what, I'll be happy with second place, especially to a rider of the calibre of Peter Hickman. But it's all so different. David Todd's just so grateful, of course, after the drama of earlier this morning when he, was, when he pulled himself off the grid with some kind of issue. However, the John Burroughs Engineering RK Racing team work tirelessly to get the bike into position to be able to take part in the restart for this man Peter Hickman who won of course 2018 from row three but he's gone from pole position again this time and it looks as if he goes around Donna Maria they just stay out of the dirtier part of the inside of the track there down into Melko, hitting his apexes perfectly. And the other good thing that we're not seeing at the moment, we may see soon, in fact, if we do see it, I think it could be the last lap, but bat markers. So Olivier Lutberger is the rider who's bringing up the rear. And he's just going into Lisboa now. As Peter Hickman comes around to start yet another lap. So lap number 10 for Peter Hickman. That was a 226.2, so he's upped it a little bit again. But he's just treating it now. I would imagine you could say a little bit like a TT. 
He's the rider, he's out on his own, he's got nobody else to worry about. It's just him against the clock. And that's one of the unique things about Macau. You get these big gaps. You wouldn't really see that in the cars. They tend to all stay close together. We don't see the big gaps like we're witnessing here with the motorcycles. You can see the gap back down to David Datzer in third place. is just at a 2.28.3. A little bit slower than his fastest time so far as David Todd exits Lisboa, heads up towards up San Francisco, I should say. Here goes Datsa, who looks to have broken Brooks by the looks of things. He's put that gap to 4.1 seconds now. However, Josh Brooks has got a little bit of thinking to do in the shape of Rob Hodson in fifth place on the SMT racing machine. And of course, Rob Hodson on that Honda, the first of the non-BMWs out on track at the moment. Lucas Mora on the Kawasaki in sixth place. Paul Jordan, BMW on in seventh. Sam West up to eighth place now. And Sam, like some of the other riders, not bringing enough. Initially, there was only one qualifying session, so they only brought tyres for one qualifying session. And then by the time they got out here, those qualifying sessions had been doubled. So they really had to work their rubber and preserve their tyres throughout a 30 second penalty for Sam West so just as I'm talking about that and a 30 second penalty for Joey Thompson as well what a shame so two 30 second penalties there one for Sam West and one for Joey Thompson so that will affect their positions they're showing as eighth and tenth at the moment that will put Dominic Herbertson up into eighth place and that's not too shabby considering he began the race I think it was on row six his first time on a superbike since he rode one at the TT earlier this year. Josh Brooks still in a strong fourth place, just ahead of Rob Hodson. But here is Peter Hickman getting closer and closer to the chequered flag. Still some distance to go. Around 10 kilometers for Peter Hickman as well. Davy Todd. In a solid second place, well, it may not have been the Hickman-Todd battle we were expecting or even perhaps anticipating. Todd just put in the fastest sector, 20.6 on their run down to the start-finish. And I'm sure... Oh, a little bit of a slide out of Lisboa again. Tyres now, they were concerned maybe how, these, how the rubber would hold over race distance. Joey Thompson just behind Dominic Herbertson and, and Sam West as they begin another lap. However, West and Herbertson probably don't know it yet. They'll find out at the end that they've had a 30-second penalty. Thompson trying to close down on Herbertson. But we are back with the race leader. This is riding on board. All second gear through here. You can hear it just shutting off the revs. No gear changes around Donna Maria. You'll hear that bike as we stay with it. We'll just drop down into first in a moment. There we go, into first gear. And around Datsa, meanwhile, in third place. And given the performance we've seen from him all through free practice and qualifying, a very well-deserved third place, should he achieve that. Josh Brooks, meanwhile, putting in his fastest times. It's a two and a half seconds, the gap between Datsa and Brooks. So Brooks has closed in a little bit on David Datsa. And that's not David Datsa slowing particularly. That's Brooks finding a little bit more confidence away around here at Macau. In fact, Brooks has just done his fastest lap, 227.8. So Josh Brooks, who knows, maybe a question mark over third position however not too much time to go Peter Hickman on what should be the victory lap 
Just cools that foot off, takes it off the peg, tips into Lisboa. They say, strangely, the brakes seem to work a little bit with a little bit of lean. It's been the perfect race, really, for Peter Hickman, the perfect performance from him and the MGM FHO Racing BMW. Fejo, team owner. Such a strong connection with Macau, of course. But will Peter Hickman come across Lutberger between now and the chequered flag? So thankfully that's not been an issue for the riders. There was a little bit of concern maybe that they would come across slower traffic. But he has such a lead in hand to play with. Almost half a minute now over David on that. There are the blue flags to be waved and that blue flag tells a slower rider a faster guy is coming through. Maybe Luke Berger will just make his just move across as they come into one of the turns and let Hickman go through. There he does. And that's how it should be. Well done, Olivia Lutberger. When it was safe for him to pull off the racing line, he did that, and Peter Hickman goes through into the Melko hairpin for the, fir the final time. So back out, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, around over 150 miles an hour. Coming down into Fisherman's. Knock it back, fourth, third, second gear. Then out of Fisherman's, up into third gear, fourth, fifth. Are we going to get a cheeky wheelie from Peter Hickman? No. Maybe across the line as he goes around the final turn here at the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix, the 55th time and the fourth time of asking for Peter Hickman as a race winner here at Macau. What a performance from him. So Peter Hickman wins. At a canter, it has to be said. Planned to perfection. Davy Todd kept him honest over the early laps. And Davy Todd should be crossing the line to take second place. But he, Peter Hickman wins here at Macau. Davy Todd in second. David Datsun, might meanwhile, just really did gain a lot of time on Davy Todd. But Datsa takes third, Josh Brooks is in fourth, Rob Hodson in fifth place. We're waiting for Lucas Mora to cross the line to confirm himself in sixth position. But Josh Brooks will be so happy with fourth, and there's the delight, David Datsa getting third. You can see this is what it means. <laughs> Peter Hickman, that must be at Lisboa. A little bit of a burnout. Only two grandstands, well, three grandstands officially, but um, there's only spectators at the start finish and also at Lisboa. No spectators anywhere else around the rest of the track. Davy Todd with a wave. Of course, he performed that fantastic stop in front of the marshals last night when he came into pit lane and they a bemused look on their face thinking, what's going on there? But anyway, this man, how happy is David Datsa? Well, he's in some very special company as well. He's alongside Peter Hickman and Davey Todd on the podium and finishing ahead of a two-time British Superbike champion and also a former World Superbike rider in the shape of Josh Brooks. Oh dear, that's Camille Holland. So, not too sure exactly what's happened there. He's moving though, so Camille Holland. The Czech Republic line rider right at the end. So that could be at Donna Maria. But they will see the flags. Dominic Herbertson really happy as well didn't have the best of starting positions on the Daffabet uh, machine on the Kawasaki however raced his way up through the order and he'll be buzzing for some time after that now then it wasn't Donna Maria Peter Hickman acknowledging the work 
of all the marshals and everyone else involved. This, oh, it's at the end. So it was Camille Holland just at the finish. What a shame for the Czech Republic rider. Don't forget, we have a whole day's worth of racing with the cars, but this is the final motorcycle action we'll have at Macau for 2023. Peter Hickman winning the race by 28.9 seconds over Davy Todd. Then Todd 1.8 seconds ahead of David Datzer. Then another 2.3 seconds to Josh Brooks in fourth. Another 8.4 seconds to Rob Hodson, who was threatening Josh Brooks' his fourth place for some distance. still have the podium ceremony to come of course and we should have some post-race interviews for you as well just waiting for Peter Hickman to come down in fact Hickman is just arriving now into that scene you can just see coming through into pit lane we get a burnout as well from Mr Hickman So he does it again, he did it at the Isle of Man TT, of course, this year. And he does it at Macau for the fourth time. Fejo has been involved in racing at Macau in the past. Darren Jones congratulates his man as well. But Fejo has been involved, but this time it's her, her FHO racing team. Davy Todd comes in in second place. And we're still waiting for David Datsun. I'm sure we'll see some celebration from the German when he arrives into pit lane as well. Josh Brooks, how strong was that? Fourth on his debut here at Macau. And I'm sure we'll see him back in 2024. Rob Hodson, brilliant fifth place as well on the SMT bike. David Datsun just coming in now. Oh, big nods from him. And his team, huge congratulations for Davy Todd. Uh, David Datsa, sorry. And Davy Todd, of course. But uh, David Datsa, absolutely buzzing. And that's what it means, folks, to get a result here at Macau. It's a big team effort from FHO Racing. John Burroughs Engineering, RK Racing team as well. After all the drama that we experienced at the start of the morning, but uh, big, happy, smiling Davy Todd. And when they think of what could have been a second place, his best ever result. That's what we like to see. Plenty of smiles. This man has just been smiling all week, David Datzer. Competes in the International Road Race Championship. Peter Hickman, of course, you know, races in the British Superbike Championship. David Todd. The Isle of Man TT, the Northwest 200, and also he put in some strong performances in BSB towards the end of the season with TAS Racing. And he will be with TAS Racing again next year. Peter Hickman on the pegs, by the way. I think they've cooled down enough now for him to stand up. I think the officials will be keen to maybe get the podium celebrations because um, they've got a whole day's racing and cars ahead, so I'm sure all the cars involved, everyone involved, will be wanting this to hurry along. However, a lot of celebrations to be had here in Macau. Well, he started the event as favourite and really no surprise to see him win. Maybe the only surprise is the manner in which he won. Half a minute almost ahead of Davy Todd. 
Shame though, we've got to think for Erno Costomo. He was a retirement. Also, Brian McCormack and Nadia Schutz, who are in hospital at the moment, but they are comfortable. So we have a press conference coming up. I would imagine. So I'm not. Don't see too much in the way of car activity just yet. It's the Macau Touring Car Cup next. So they'll be on track shortly, and we'll have Alan Hyde and David Allison will be bringing you top class commentary as always for the cars. <laughs> yeah, David Dats with the Bavarian leathers. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of them is from Germany? Just check out the leathers. So they're on their way. It looks like we will get the press conference then. That's good. We'll be able to get the thoughts of Peter Hickman, Davy Todd, and David Datzer. We may have, we'll have the podium celebration, of course, as the we can see the grid starting to form up in preparation for the. China Touring Car Championship, the Macau Touring Car Cup. Same again next year? I don't think so. Don't tell Faye. Both have been ticked out of there. You've enjoyed it though, sure. Yeah, no, it's good now that it's all. Uh, no, it's all over. No, it's all over. There, there we go. As I say, Josh Brooks took his time. I think it took him a little bit longer than he's expecting to learn his way around here, but. Um, took his time. I think it took him a little bit longer than he's expecting to learn his way around here, but. Um, he was smiling, we just saw him then, and he may well be back next year, who knows. But he certainly, as someone just said there, he's ticked that box and he's experienced the thrill of racing at Macau. So we're getting ready for the podium celebration for the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix. And there is Erno Costomo. It was him that pulled over. So something with the bike. What a shame for the Finn. He's had a great season, though, nonetheless, in the IRRC series. King of Imatra as well this year. But not the King of Macau, but I'm certain he will be back in 2024. He wasn't too sure what he was going to do uh, tyre-wise. Went hard in the end, but unfortunately that theory never got to be tested. And at the speed we're going, that bit of an oscillation feels like a judder. Thank you, thank you. So we are getting ready for the podium presentation. We just have to be concerned, obviously, of course, with the fact that there is more racing to come. And sometimes, as has happened in the past, we've been able to bring you a podium because the next race is about to get underway. What a performance from Lucas Moura as well. Really strong ride from him. We can't be too far away now from this podium. We have uh, Dr. Kent Wong will be presenting the awards to David Dancer and Davey Todd. He's the chief advisor of Melco Resorts and Entertainment Limited. And then it'll be Mr. Pun Wen Kun, the president of the Sports Bureau and coordinator of the Macau Grand Prix Organizing Committee. He'll be handing over the main prize to Peter Hickman. So an unfamiliar 88 for Peter Hickman, but it brought good fortune. A rare smile from Michael Rutter. So 
So unfortunately, his race was run pretty much as soon as it had begun. Michael Rutter here at Macau. Been playing catch up all week on a brand new bike, the brand new Superbike. So I don't know what the delay is. We will, of course, be getting the national anthem as well. So my apologies. Oh, here we go. Morning. Welcome to the 70th Macau Grand Prix. And now it's the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix 55th edition trophy presentation ceremony. First of all, let's welcome the top three riders to the podium. The second runner-up is number 55, David Mario Dezza. David Dezza. The first runner-up is number seven. He'll David be like Jotto. that all the way till Christmas, I think. And here comes David Todd. He'll be beaming as well. And the winner is number 88, Peter Hickman. This man too, they're off to Thailand for a few days after this. And now it's time for the national anthem for the winner. Now the prize presentation's coming up. Now I would like to invite the following guests to present the laurel and trophy to the winners. Let's welcome Dr. Kent Wong, Chief Advisor of Malco Resorts and Entertainment Limited, to present the laurel and trophy, first of all, to the second runner-up, David Mario Dezza. Congratulations. And I would like to also invite Dr. Wong to present the laurel and the trophy to the first runner-up as well, Davy John Tor. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, Dr. Wong. And now I would like to invite Mr. Porn Wang Kun, President of the Sports Bureau and Coordinator of the Macau Grand Prix Organizing Committee, to present the laurel and trophy to the winner, number 88, Pete Hakeman. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Please proceed to the center and take a photo together, please. And riders, you may reach to the top of the podium. Take this photo together. We still have a press conference Thank to come you. as well. Thank Whether we you, have yes. time to Thank bring you, you that, much. fingers crossed, Thank I know it riders, also as well. Remain on the podium. It's very early Thank in the morning for our viewers in Europe. So, Ryder, please remain as it's the time for the champagne shower. <laughs> and let our audience share your glory moments. Every everybody ready? Woo! Congratulations! Congratulations to the top three winners of the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix 55th edition. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, riders. Please again remain at where you are. And now I'll pass. Attention in the paddock. Macau Touring Cars. China Touring Car Championship Cars. Paddock Gate and Pit Exit are now open. Macau Touring Cars. China Touring Cars. Paddock Gate and pit exit are now open. I think we might be uh, struggling okay, to get the press conference, but we might just uh, get some thoughts. Uh, after my bad start, I say, fucking hell, the fast guys are gone. Then, yeah, I managed it, and they make us her place. Amazing. Did you catch him on the last lap? Oh, uh, no. I think two, two laps more, and... We, we had fun. 
Second place, uh, Davy Todd. Uh, Davy, it's a challenging day. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't expecting a day like today at all. Um, the Burroughs Engineering Arcade team have, um, have, have worked flat out all weekend. Um, it's my first race back with them since 2018. It's a pleasure to be back with the team. They're an awesome group of guys. Thanks to John Burroughs for giving me the opportunity. Um, honestly, I was, I was just so unlucky that first start. Um, you split an oil, an oil pipe. It's just, you know, one of those really unlucky things. And the guys shoved the bike straight back to the garage and, uh, and worked flat out. They said, just in case, just in case it gets stopped and we can jump in the rerun. Um, and it, lo and behold, it did. And we got back out there. Managed to take it to Pete there for uh, for four laps. Just tried to sit in behind him. I knew the tyres were going to come into play and uh, tried to save it as much as I can. Just didn't didn't have the tyre to compete at the end. So, no, hats off to him. He's rode a great race. And uh, and thanks to the team for an awesome job. Congratulations. And Peter, home event for the team. Fourth Macau win for you. What a day. Yeah, uh, fantastic. You know, I mean, first things first, uh, I really hope uh, Ryan McCormack and, and Nadia are okay. Uh, it was a shame to see uh, him go down, but uh, fingers crossed. To disappear. Yeah, there you go. I uh, hope they're okay anyway. So um, yeah, after after restart, it's never nice to you know. I was almost just starting to get into a rhythm, but it was good uh, to get Davy back out on the grid for the for the second run and uh, made a good start. Had to had to just kind of sit and chill for a little bit. Although actually the lap times were still pretty strong. Um, and then just thought, oh, well, well, it's a long race, you know. <laughs> the gear circuit is a, is a really tough circuit on riders, machines, and tyres. So just got a nice rhythm early doors and try, tried to break him as, uh, as early as I could. And he stuck with me for the gaps, and then the gap started to just come away and come away. So uh, managed the gap from there and was really enjoying riding around this uh, fantastic circuit. And it's fantastic for, for Faye, the FHO racing team. It's their first, first time here as a, as a team and her first Grand Prix to, to be able to, to get pole and as well is uh, fantastic. So there we go. The thoughts of David Datzer, David Todd and Peter Hickman. So interesting that it was a split oil pipe that was the issue for David Todd. Well, that's it. That brings to a conclusion the 55th Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix in the 70th year of racing at Macau.